key defining feature of the programming that's available in creating session segments on the Procyon is that you can interpolate between waves. So you have a start setting and a stop setting. And let's look at some of the effects of that. I'm going to go ahead and turn off two of the other channels so we can see that in greater detail. So I'm going to go from 1 to 10. And again, we're at a 10 second range here. So let's take a look at that. As you can see, the wave becomes faster as it moves across time, thus compressing it across the display. So these are flashes of the LEDs, and they get faster and faster as you move across the time segment duration, but in a smooth way, in a way that's a slow morph between the beginning setting and the end setting. So that can create some really nice effects, visual effects on the Procyon in its flicker settings uh, to start off slow and then become increasingly fast as we move across. Now the range of the Procyon is all the way up to 75 Hertz, which is extremely fast, fastest in the industry. So fast, in fact, that we, our visual perception systems do not distinguish a flashing at that time. It appears to be a very solid color. So you can also use that to create some of the features available on the Procyon called the Gans frame. And that's only one way of doing it. And it is very processor intensive. That That's pushing the CPU in the Procyon more than may be necessary if you are only going for that particular effect. But just to let you know, it does go all the way from 10 flashes per second, or 10 flashes every 10 seconds, I should say, all the way to 75 flashes per second. Now, one of the limitations of viewing such fast waveforms on a graph like this is that if you do go ahead and go all the way up to the 75 hertz, 75 flashes per second, the graph becomes less and less useful, at least spread over a time range. Because, as you'll see, there's a limited amount of visual space that's available to actually display that. So, as mentioned, when we graph a very high frequency value, the display quickly starts to compress to the point where it, be, it appears to be a solid color, whereas in fact they're just so close together that they're creating the illusion of a solid. The interesting part is that this is what you're likely to experience as you move higher and higher in the frequency settings. But this is probably slightly exaggerated because it's more toward 50 hertz or so that you're going to begin to experience the bleeding together and lose the ability to differentiate between the frames, the, the flashing frames. So keep that in mind when you're working with higher settings, especially when you're using the randomized feature, that the graph is, is going to become a little less detailed because one of the major features of this software is to see the interaction between the LEDs. So one strategy to do that is to adjust your settings down to take into consideration you only have between 1 and 10 seconds available. So if I wanted to see the interaction between 1 Hertz and 75 Hertz, then it would be best to go ahead and divide those each one of those by 10. So once we've divided everything by 10, We've brought it into a range that fits better along the graphing axis. So we're able to see a better representation of how the waveform is altering over time. So you would want to just use that for a preview and then adjust it back as you actually uh, plugged it into the Procyon editor to deliver to the machine. Now one of the difficulties in programming the Procyon 
is that unless you have a background in electronics or in sound design or synthesis, some of these terms may not be familiar to you. So frequency, the number of flashes per second. So it's faster or slower how fast that the LEDs are going to react. The amplitude setting is basically the brightness, the volume. So let's take a look at that setting. So I'm going to reduce it down to half, half of its amplitude and half of its brightness. And keep in mind that it, in, it is interpolating, which is morphing over time across this 10 second window here. And let's take a look at that. Okay, so now that that's calculated, we can see that the Procyon or the LED on the Procyon is becoming increasingly bright over time. Its brightness is increasing as it moves across, going from half illumination at its beginning setting to full illumination at the end. And the colors somewhat reflect that deeper reds here to the brightest reds at the very end. Let's exaggerate that effect even more and let's take it all the way down from off to full. So from off all the way to full brightness to be honest with you, it doesn't seem that it's fully reflected here in the color graph. This should be very, very dark red, almost black, as it moves across. We're getting our blacks here in between where the cycle of the waveform is turned off. But we're really not getting a full, fair representation of the deepening of the red. So, in in your experience on the Procyon, with these settings, you're going to get the LED fading in slowly as the frequency increases across the segment. And this can create very nice effects as you fade LEDs in and out of each other. So let's go ahead and take a look just for instance of a setting like that. I'm going to go ahead and put these down to more reasonable I'm going to go ahead and do, yeah, one's fine, one and one. Now, see, we have the phase. We learned a little bit about phase. Um, we have the phase offset here. So we'll keep that setting. And we'll go from zero to fully on. And we'll start the green fully on and turn it off over the duration of the segment. Turn the green channel on and sign and sign. Now let's calculate that. So what we're seeing now is that the red being offset in phase is going to start off and then move to full brightness. Whereas if the phase wasn't set, then it would start fully on and, and actually we'll look at that in a moment. Now the green goes from full brightness all the way down to off. And the red does just the opposite, starts off and goes to full brightness. So here in the color graph, we can see that we're moving between green as the predominant color with a bit of red, moving more and more toward orangish type tones as the mixture occurs here at the, the very middle where they're equal to each other we should be experiencing a little bit of mixture on the predominantly green side because they only completely match here in the very middle which would be reflected around here on the graph where it's a, a true orangish type of tone. So that's a good way to just see how the visual editor can show you the effects of a little bit more complex settings. And let's go ahead and put them back into phase. 
a DAO rather than moving in and out of each other, one on as the other is off. They're actually sharing the same period of being on as well as being off. So now we're getting a much deeper color mixtures, more in the yellowish type of range, the yellowish and the orange. So they are generally on and off or illuminated at the same time. However, the green starting at the highest amplitude and the red is ending at the highest amplitude. So this is a crossfading kind of effect. So you're generally crossfading the sine wave of the green into the sine wave of the red. And that's very powerful concerning how the Procyon can deliver great visual experiences. So that gives us just the briefest understanding of amplitude as it relates to the programming editor and a general understanding of phase.